There are some men that have made more of an impact than others in the history of watchmaking. Ferdinand Berthoud has a special place on the list of the great masters of time. Born in Plasmont in Switzerland, Berthoud nevertheless made his career in Paris. In 1753, at only 26 years old, he was named Master Watchmaker. He quickly climbed the ladder of success until he was named Master Clockmaker Mechanic to the King and to the Navy in 1770. Considered to be the father of the French sailing watch, Ferdinand Berthoud had almost become forgotten until this passionate fan, to say the least, decided one day to offer him a new future. J'ai découvert euh, Ferdinand Berthoud dans le cadre euh, d'un musée qu'on a à Fleurier, dans le cadre de Chopin Manufacture. I discovered Ferdinand Bertou at a museum that we have at Fleurier, founded as part of the House of Chopin. We're very interested in marine chronometers, and when we say marine chronometer, we of course think of Bertou. There were only real specialists who knew Bertou, only the hardcore collectors, but of course there were no more contemporary Bertou pieces, and my idea was to commemorate this beautiful era of watchmaking and imagine what Bertou would have done for a wristwatch today. So we relaunched Bertou in a contemporary version. Ce que un Bertou aurait fait comme montre de poignet aujourd'hui. Donc euh, relancer Bertou en version contemporaine. On s'est inspiré au niveau technique euh, we were inspired at the technical level of the construction and architecture of the movement of the time. Movements of marine chronometers, so with columns, with a rocket chain system, combined with a tourbillon, so it was really sophisticated. It's all combined with a case with modern forms, but recalls nevertheless the old onboard chronometers. With an octagonal form, the 44mm case houses in its center a typical Berthoud dial, but stripped. During the last edition of the SIHH, the house unveiled a chronometer with a unique regulatory display and ultra-resistant cemented stainless steel case. Now at Basel World, it was a more exclusive version that was unveiled the 1785 edition, a series of five unique chronometer FB1R editions. Pour euh, la foire de Bâle, ici, ce même mouvement, mais dans un boîtier euh, bronze, qui rappelle euh, l'usage du bronze. For Basel World, it's the same movement, but in a bronze case that recalls the use of bronze on vessels during the 18th century. There were many pieces in bronze, and the regulator cases of the times, the marine chronometers, were also made of bronze. And this bronze we patinated individually, so each piece is unique. There's a piece that's a little more green, another that's a little more brown, and it really recalls the famous voyage by La Perre where they took a few Bertou marine chronometers to travel around the world during the 18th century. Actually, it's to show the passing of time, what time does to bronze, and I think we captured this essence here. A 1785 edition celebrating the most important expedition in the history of the French Navy, that of l'Astrolabe and La Boussole frigates. Led by the Count de La Pérouse, the expedition brought along five naval chronometers designed by Ferdinand Berthoud, the clockmaker mechanic of the King and the Navy. To have a chance to be able to compare these long-lost items to those imagined today is a dream that Karl Friedrich Scheufele still believes in. Unfortunately, these timepieces are at the bottom of the sea, even today, but we know more or less where. So there is a little hope that they will come to the surface one day and we can admire them again.